grinding here at episode 35. We're grinding. Yes, sir. And just uh, speaking of grinders, if you haven't paid, played this long of a season and you're in October right now, mm. they're grinding, buddy. They're grinding. Today's Mound episode, yeah. Mound Visit episode, man. Number 35, yeah, today, James. Epi- episode 35. Uh, this is an exciting episode. We're digging into the uh, the nitty gritty of the World Series here. It's been, uh, I think, last night's game. I think was probably the most or the least exciting of any of the games so far, um, which is a shame. But you know, it happens. And I, I guess a what do you think you know, about you these? You know why? Here, you know why? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I know everybody knew this going into it, that the bullpens, the battle of the bullpens, it's almost like watching a spring training game, right? Oh, Guys yeah. getting their work in. Yeah. There's a reason why starters are supposed to go 100 pitches or, or more. There's a reason yep. for yep. that. Um, they're conditioned for that. And it's a shame that that's where the game has has evolved and changed in, in some respects, a lot of respects. Yep. When I was coming up, and I was drafted as a starter, in order to get paid, in order to be considered a, one of the top pitchers on the team, one of the top five pitchers on your team, you had to cover six innings yep. and give up three runs or less. That was a quality start. Quality start, yeah. And last night, when you're throwing a third of an inning, trying to mop up, trying to pick up, there's more pressure. And Now, the momentum kind of shifts. And that, not that you – I'm not going to make any excuses for the game last night. Or for anybody, sure. but the precedence is there's a different mindset, and and it, you're sure as a bullpen guy you don't know when you're coming in, but when you don't know when you're coming in in a World Series spot, mm-hmm. a little bit harder. The formula to me is kind of there's a there's a path to market to secure a win, right? And 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 being set up for success. I felt like uh, there's a little scrambled eggs a little bit last night. And that's easy being a Monday morning quarterback. It's so easy to say that. Sure. But I just know with the seesaw battle that it is, knowing that, hey, Arizona probably caught up to them. Like, hey, this is a must win for them. I guarantee you they felt like that, and the burden was on the bullpen, which has been mm-hmm. noted that they are the reason why they're there, right? Yeah. Everybody said that. The, the, if it wasn't for the bullpen, and the bullpen kind of fell through, fell short last night. That That's a great point. It was literally the exact thing thing I was going to say I was I don't know what it is with these bullpen games in the playoffs now I mean I understand it and I understand that a having a bullpen you know having a lockdown bullpen is kind of you know it's very important to a team's success now in Major League Baseball but I I can even remember just a few years back uh like looking at that uh, Nationals, Astros, World Series, where you had, you know, like Strasburg was going six innings. I remember like Zach Greinke. I remember Zach Greinke was pulled in the seventh inning of a game in that World Series, and people were up in arms about it. Yep. You know, people were saying, what do you mean you're pulling him in the seventh inning? He's dealing. But now, I mean, it doesn't even seem like managers would think to let their pitcher go seven innings. It's, it's no. kind of wild how that shift has happened so quickly to where – I mean, you look at a guy like Brandon Fott on the Diamondbacks, who's kind of, you know, made a name for himself uh, in these last few series and this postseason specifically. Um, but I mean, he he hasn't. I don't even think he's made it through five innings. And you kind of look at him as a guy who's been carrying the workload as a starting pitcher, yeah. and he hasn't even made it through five that's, innings. So that's the point. It's wild. The, you know managing through the iPad and that's what they yeah. call it now. Um, you know, these decisions are based upon percentages and analytics. Yep. And sometimes, like I said, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And again, I do believe analytics have a huge part in today's game to make some decisions Absolutely. or make an indecisive decision. Maybe more. I, Hey, listen, if I knew how to bet, which I've been terrible at, and thank God I didn't, I didn't <laughs> get to last, last night. night. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting kick, kick cats and, uh, Peanut M and M's with my son Halloween time. There you go. That was more the focus. But I was thinking about this the whole time and keeping tabs on the game. And once I saw the game was kind of running away, I yeah, I didn't expect to 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 turn up and see eleven seven on the board as a final mm. score. Um, yeah. So forgive me, I didn't catch all the game live, but yeah, I did see a, yeah. some highlights and and whatnot. But listen, man, sometimes Halloween makes more 
sense right now because I'm no, not. It's a, you, yeah, you gotta go trick or treating with the. <laughs> I'm kid. not getting the World Series ring, bro. But I got some massive Kit Kats. You know the good houses, bro. The good houses gave out not bite size, right? <laughs> There's no bite That's size. Right. You're going to big, big fly. This is a big league Halloween <laughs> trick or treat, and you know we're at, we're going to big houses up here, the mansions up in Pittsburgh, baby. <laughs> That's what you got. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. I I want to uh, I want to shift gears. Keep talking about the World Series, but I want to ask you what you think your like. What is the biggest storyline been for you so far in this World Series? I know we just touched on. Um, uh, that shift in pitching approach and all of that, but ha- is has that been the biggest storyline for you that you've seen, or is there something else that's well, kind of stuck there, out to you? Yeah, one undertone. It was the other day when when Fam uh, Tommy Fam was has been the first player to go five for five. This is just mm. the character. I think an insight to some of the stuff that we will never know. That's why I say when you're dumping champagne on each other and going, well, this is a great group of guys. This is exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. This right here is, is if I could drill home a point and it was for my boy, Jace Peterson, who I was yeah, talking that's right. to here when I said, dude, that guy was playing for Oakland. I said, dude, ball out. You're going to play for a contender. Little dude, I know he's going to be in a world series. I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> Thinking about that's awesome. My boy getting in that bat because his teammate was unselfish. Could have said something historic, had a chance to go five for five. Said, hey, hold up. Can we get my boy in that bat? You put him on the roster. That showcased to me, he said a big storyline, that showcased to me why those guys are there. There was a Mm -hmm. mentality. There's a mindset. There was a belief system. And you go back to when they had the worst record. Was it in July? Uh, it was a stretch from June to the beginning of August. Okay, yeah. so June to August, they won like it's like sixteen know. games, something like it that. It was terrible. bad. It was, it was real bad. Record yeah. to say this is a team that's going to be in the playoffs, fighting for a, a, a contention spot. So again, what's the what's my biggest storyline? The fact that those guys were so unselfish and they played team baseball to put yeah, themselves in a position to succeed, and that goes right to the front office. Kudos to the Diamondbacks, man. Because I know that that's something that they can show other teams, like hopeful Pittsburgh. Hello, you know, here we go. Take yeah. everybody tries to find that format and formula to say, and even Glover agrees. You hear? That's, that's right. right. Yeah, you hear him back that's there. Right, <laughs> that's right, baby. <laughs> I, that's a great. That's a great point too. And and you know, not not for nothing, but to come back and make that game a four run game last night after going down eleven nothing in the fight, third man. inning. There's fight. That There's it, fight you know. That that, that's not nothing. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a lot of fight. That's a lot of heart. These guys have been balling and, and, and playing for one another, right? Yeah. Unselfish baseball. That's that's what I took away from it. And I hope, yeah. I mean, I'd love to see a team that's never, an organization that's never won a World Series. And I've played for Texas twice. I got some allegiance there. But I got friends on Arizona. So I'm like, shoot, man, they're both getting a ring. One one just says World Series champs on it, you know. They're both going to be yep. pretty awesome hood ornaments, um, but and I got a second place ring. But it, it it stings a little bit when it doesn't say World Series champs. You get all that way, it is disappointing. It's a letdown. But hey, yeah. man, they're there. They got nothing to be ashamed of if they don't they don't uh, win the World Series. Uh, Arizona has proven a lot to a lot of people about what what's yes, special have. and what things have happened over there. So I'm really yeah, strong because I don't want to see it end yet. I yeah, see I know, it. I know. I'm not ready for baseball to be done yet either. I think that's that's part of part of the part well, of it for me too. But it's not. It's yeah. just beginning. Some other places, bro. Look at my segue. That's, Dubai just drafted hmm. some of these guys. Bartolo <laughs> Colon at fifty just got redrafted. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's hope for me, bro. I said no to the Savannah hey. Bananas, but maybe Dubai. I've always wanted to go there. Maybe I could throw an inning or two, throw out another disc or, you know. Now, my, my question, th- now that you brought up the bananas, I don't know if you saw no. their their most recent world tour announcement. Now that they're making their way to major league stadiums, does that change your mind at all? No, I walked off a of big oh. league field. I don't know to go back. If I want to go back, I'm sure I could, you know, use my gold card or my press pass or a friend to be like, hey, yeah, you want to go. Right. I, I don't. I'm a that's my fraternity. I don't need yeah. to go into the sub, you know, 
that's the like subgenre. Yeah, that's like a <laughs> it's like a one hit wonder to me. No offense, I think it's great oh, entertainment. Damn it, it's great I entertainment. Tried. It's great entertainment. I'm not gonna be dancing on a baseball field <laughs> unless it's a BP for a big league game. That's it. It's the only time. All I right, can. all right. No, no hate. I'm it. not hate. I'm not hating on it. Just it's not for me. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. Well, let's 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 but move Dubai, on. We'll dude. keep talking about. Oh, Dubai is Dubai's a little hey, different. Ex big leaguers playing against ex big leaguers. That to me seems a little bit more okay. And this is proof too <laughs> that they're glo- they're trying to globalize this game. Yeah, they're trying to globalize baseball, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, hey, absolutely. And, I, and and you know, listen, soccer is there. I think they're trying to take a play, page out of the playbook, introduce baseball. I mean, there's no telling. I mean, what was the the? Um, I think I saw one of the guys. He actually played minor league ball, a double A pitcher. There were a couple of Indian javelin throwers, uh, and uh, yeah, they that one kid got to double A. So wow, you know, again, I think again because the competition is only so high, in order yeah. to get better to play against the world's best, you got to play at a high level to compete against the best in the big leagues, which is the best league in the world Mm -hmm. uh, right now. So uh, the argument is, hey, if guys can still continue to get reps, and even obviously Bartolo Colon being a superhero, still getting drafted, redrafted. It's like I said, you you get to re-retire. He gets to (laughs) re-retire. Think about that. Right. Yeah, that's a, yeah. There are a couple couple big name ex big leaguers. You had obviously Bartolo. You had uh, Robinson Cano. Uh, I believe Robinson, Robinson Cano. Yeah, Shed Long was uh, another guy who played for the Mariners. There were some it, uh, other bigger big, names. Panda. But... Panda. Yep, Pablo. Yeah. That's right. Pablo. Yep. Um, another throwback. Yeah. Yeah, there were some uh, a lot of Latin guys, yeah. a lot of Latin American guys. Those guys have baseball in their blood. Yeah, they're I, baseball rats, man. I think Julio Franco was the oldest to ever play. I think Bartolo's mm. going after that record, dude. I love, I love it. I love it. I it was something that I didn't even know about it until no. I was like, I saw something, something on Twitter, and it was like Bartolo Colon has been drafted. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think Mariano Rivera and a couple ex big leaguers uh, were the investors too in that. Who oh, that's was, awesome. I got to see who the whole investment team uh, for Dubai baseball. I love that. Well, while you look that up, I'll transition us to our to another the back. Well, kind of back to the topic we were talking about when you talk about storylines, and this can kind of play into a bigger a bigger discussion. But um, this whole um, you know robot umpire thing, <laughs> but this kind of thing, and and you'll see this here. This cannot happen in a World Series. That can't happen. Right there. Mm. I mean, I'll, I'll play it again one more time, but. For me, this was a pivotal spot in a game. I mean, I think the game at this point was kind of in hand. You had Leclerc on the mound. He's been he's been pretty much nails this entire postseason. But when you give a guy this pitch, I mean, that's the difference between a leadoff base runner and he ended up grounding out on the next pitch there. Um, and obviously, you know, that's the. I mean, again, man, that's the element of what that's the human they, element. Absolutely, yes. And that's I understand where, that. That's why we're missing, you know, ejections, and that's why we're missing some of the old school stuff. That again, the brand of baseball and what people see now—it's so different. We've gotten so like that's not fair. We've allowed crying in baseball. When we started, that was with the instant replay, and I love mm-hmm. that we're trying to get the call right. I sure. love that we're trying to get the call right, and we're using now using technology, but to take human all the way out of it then we might as well have some players you know just put a robot out there as a player man because if you're gonna make that argument it sounds stupid it sounds stupid no i get it i get it i i think so i i i don't think we should have like solely robot umpires i still think you need the umpires out there but what i like i don't know if you have you seen the uh the challenging strike calls have you seen that in triple a because i i don't mind that At all, I think well, that you bring well, in something like that. It's quick. It moves fast. Like here's the thing: if they do bring yeah. it in, don't let me know about it. Put something in the umpire's <laughs> pocket that buzzes, right? Like a little pager. That was a strike. <laughs> you know, that way they don't look foolish. I, just don't don't make me think that there's not human element to see that because 
again, I, I do understand these hitters are so pro and they know the strike zone, right? Yeah. But, you know, then again, I'm going to defend my catcher. Russ Martin was the best for me Framing. for making balls in the strikes yeah. because you could see how much you could get. And, you know, yeah, putting the ball down the middle, that's something you should be able to do willingly as a, as a big league pitcher. But putting sure. eight or nine of them on the outside corner when it matters, that's when you know your next level. Yeah. And then you sit there and go, well, the umpire can see that I'm doing that and can, it kind of feels out. You know, everything is feel. Everything is perspective. Everything is a lens. Everything yeah. is, 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 you know, looked at differently from perspective, okay? You know, who's calling balls and strikes? It's called, there's a reason why the ump- home plate umpire is sitting behind the catcher, right? You feel like he's got the best view of what he's interpreting the strike zone to be. So why sure. is the second baseman, uh, second base umpire calling balls and strikes? He's seeing it like the pitcher sees it and how the hitter is coming in. He'd see it more clearly. So I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, I never want to see robots in the game. We've already allowed the, the analytics and some of the other stuff and decision making and people don't like that. People yeah. don't like that. Well, that's that's kind of why I like this strike zone challenge. I that's why I like having a cuz each team has a specific number of challenges that the hitter has to be strategic. You I mean as a as an offense, you have to be strategic about using it because you can't just be challenging every other pitch because then either you run out or you don't. But but <laughs> to a bigger point too, I think almost that little box that they started showing on the screen during games, I think that – when it, how long ago was it that they put that on there? Because it uh, seemed like – I remember it used to be on a couple national games. Like it would be on some of the Monday – or the Sunday night baseball games, and then you wouldn't see it on your regular televisions broadcast. But now like – you know, obviously I, like I watch SNY every night for the Mets. Like it's on there. I think that the addition of that little strike zone box um, – <laughs> I think that that has added to this narrative a little bit because now the fans are looking and they're like, you know, right. I'm I'm looking at that pitch being like, oh, what are you talking? That's like two inches outside when I would you know never. Have- you got money on the game, bro. That's why no, you're no. crazy. <laughs> well, but it's but if you think about it, like the average fan at home is not it, like if you look at that pitch without that little box right there. You're probably you might be like ah that's a little outside but it's borderline rather than having that box there seeing that pitch and being like Jeez, right, here's, that's not even close here's, here's here's a dumb analogy for me sure but, but because I look at athletes want to be rock stars rock stars want to be athletes right okay that's kind of my saying that's what I came up with rock and ball wines okay that's, that's how I look at myself I would love to be a rock star like Mick Jagger or Eddie Vedder because <laughs> you can do it longer but. That's like telling them, hey, they were off key or they missed something. Start the effing song over again. That's kind of like what we're doing in baseball and sports here. Why are we going to try to redo something when it's going? There's a flow and a state. Sure. And I hate that there's interruptions. It, it, again, mm-hmm. all I can surmise it is we're allowing crying in baseball. And the more we keep doing that, it's going to get worse and worse. We're making concessions to a game with all these different rules, why are we changing the rules? The game was great for how long? Before we had the box, before we had the this to that. The game was great then. Now we're trying to make it better? Yeah, I always want to make something better. But at some point, what makes it great? The way it was? Or we're making it great because the balls are harder? We want to see NFL touchdown scores. We want to see more strikes. We want to make sure the call is right to the degree that it's like we're splitting hairs. Yeah. And I know there's a lot riding on it. What's riding on it? It's a ring and a big player share check for the players, right? Yeah. But also, if I'm going to sit there and tell Eddie Vedder, hey, man, you, you were off on there. The drummer was this is the guy you got to go off of. Can we redo that song? Like, start it over. We're yeah. not doing that. We're not, we're, not, <laughs> sure. we're not analyzing that at the concert, maybe because there's pyrotechnics and whatever else. <laughs> maybe a bad analogy. But you see my point, like, yeah, why, yeah, I get it. why are we dicing this? There's stuff up that we're like, this is this this is what it is. Play yeah. ball. When you say play ball, okay, we're playing ball. That don't start don't start making it so controversial that it just loses its luster for me. But I guess that's coming. I am old school. Sorry. I just, well, no, I get it. Yeah, I just don't like that we've we're making constantly making concessions 
to make valid points and arguments, and I see all the points and arguments, there wouldn't be all these talk shows. We wouldn't have a show. We wouldn't have Mound Visit. We wouldn't have all these things that analyze. But again, when these guys' jobs are on the line, right, it comes down to if there's no player, there's yeah. no game. The players are the product. The players are the thing. And when I sit there and I go, the, the intensity and the pressure that's on the players as is, you know, you're trying to make that break. LeClerc, I'm sorry, if you got that call, yeah, great. Whether Was it a ball? Yeah, it was a ball. But your job is to th get ahead with strikes and get outs with balls. That's what pitching mm -hmm. is, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're carving it, cutting it, spinning it, it, where it crosses the plate and where it's framed and how, it, there's a lot of things that go into that. So yeah. I would love to see how, if there was a robot, that strike zone, we made the bases bigger, we're making the strike zone so small, yeah, we might see higher scoring games if we get that technical with it. I'm sorry, it just sure. Hurts. And that's why guys I say, that's why guys would say, why is there so many strikeouts in the game? Because we've we've taken yeah. away an element of the game. So you start doing that with pitching, what are we going to see? What are we going to see? We're going to see yeah, more it, pitchers going to start trying to throw harder. They're going to try. They're going to be more wild. You can't pitch in. You can't knock a guy down. You know, God forbid you hit a person nowadays. For God forsake, those guys that yeah. back in the day didn't have helmets and gear, and they had to sit in there on Bob Gibson throwing ninety five at your face to knock yeah. you off the plate. So, and they accepted it. They accepted it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it's 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 a uh, no, no. I, I mean, there's no, there's almost no winning that like debate. You know what I mean? Because the game has changed so that you know the the game has changed so much. And it's, yep. you know, there are adjustments that you have to make every time you, I, I think, but it, and that's the most difficult part. And I'm glad I'm not, you know, not the one making the decisions, but the most difficult part is finding out how to balance all of those changes, keeping the game, you know, you know, as close to that beautiful game that we all fell in love with as possible. And also understanding that there are things that you need to do to listen. I guess further the the advancement of the sport and all that sort of thing because you know it is tr like I thought about it before this series started and I'd be curious to feel uh, to to know what you think about this but I said this at the beginning of the series to myself I was like you know what this World Series you know I know the 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 people at Fox probably weren't happy about it on Major League Baseball not might not have been su super happy having the Rangers and the Diamondbacks when you could have had you know the Astros and the Phillies or the Dodgers or whatever yeah, bigger money bigger and, following probably exactly but and, but I you know I looked at this World Series and I was like you know what this is for baseball fans this World Series right, this is man. for the diehards who know you know who know these some of these lesser known players and these cool stories on each of these teams and but then it, you take a step back too, and you look at it and you're like, "Geez, this is on pace to become the least watched World Series in the last, you know, however many years." And it's like, I, you know, what do you? It's not. It's, all, it's hard oh, to. Man. Like I said, they they created a tournament, and I'm going to yeah. go argue here. Maybe see, maybe dancing with the Savannah Bananas would be way easier because if I came out of <laughs> retirement, if I came out of retirement, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be like. This isn't the game I know. I'd have to yeah. retrain, retrain in a different way. My mind, my mind. Um, what was my point now about um, the tournament? The, yeah. So the, what I was going to say is, you know, nope, the least watched, but you've created a tournament now where you, the, the it's no longer good to win a division series to have right. a week off. Yeah. At the end of the season, I've said that. Mm -hmm. I'm regurgitating and a broken record here. But I go, if you want to see the Atlanta Braves, right, powerhouse, best team in baseball yep. this year, play, you know, the best American League, Houston Astros, whoever it's going to be. Sure, sure, sure. Then you got to figure out a better way because if you don't know baseball or you do, at this time of year, man, a week off is way too much time. Because yeah, we I thought that, that was the okay, first thing I thought Scherzer. about when you... I mean, Scherzer, yeah. as an example, Hall of Fame sure. pitcher. He's had a lot of time off. His curveball isn't as sharp. He's not the mm -hmm. same guy. He's coming battling back. God bless him. Right? Yeah, he's also injured, yeah. Yeah, he's exactly. He's a competitor, but he's not 100%. He's given 100% of whatever percentage he is um, yep. to be there for his team and, and to give them a best shot. Um, just the name alone, right, is, is intimidating. we got Scherzer going today. 
but yeah. but too much time off. It just shows you this game. And if you're you're never going to be 100 percent in this game, except for mm -hmm. a few few games a season, maybe a month of the season, you're 100 percent. I hear you. And the rest of the way, all that time off, it's like when dudes are yeah. in a groove. You got to find a way yeah. to stay in that groove, stay in that zone. And a lot of it is the mental. And, and it's hard because mentally, when you have time off and you shut down, you start thinking about, oh, I can go put my socks in my drawer. I can go watch these movies. I sit on my couch. I can mm -hmm. wake up and make breakfast with my family. I can go walk my dog. You know, yeah. it's like sleeping yeah. in your own bed is the craziest feeling when you go home for the season. That yeah. is an amazing feeling for a player. And people don't realize wow. No, I'm, no, definitely not. You know? It's crazy to think about. Yeah, I, I, I'm I for eight to ten months. You'll you'll enjoy going home. You pay <sighs> you pay more for living on the road than right. the mortgage payment. And you get to live in this place. You pay a <laughs> handsome note. And listen, all these players making almost a million dollars or more, and they take a third of that home with them. By the way, mm. to get to go home, mm -hmm. right? It's a sacrifice yeah. to do this life. So. Fellas, I know where you're at if you're watching the mountain visit. But let's let's finish this thing out, dude. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for Jace Peterson. I'm so happy for my mm -hmm. boy. Um, Melanson's over there. Bannister, who used to be the manager mm -hmm. of the Texas Rangers. How about that? Well, let's get back to the uh, the series at hand because there's something I've always wanted to do with you, and that's kind of break down and at bat. And I think that this is not, not from last night's game. This is from the game before. And I thought that this was really one of the more pivotal at bats that I watched because – at this point in the series, at, at this point, uh, I think it was the sixth or seventh inning, the Diamondbacks were threatening. They had a runner on to, to lead off the inning, and their best hitter, Corbin Carroll, coming up. So it kind of felt like if they're going to come back, this is it. This is the spot to come back. So let me show you this at-bat here. And I'd love to have you just kind of – you could watch the at-bat first and then point out anything that you see um, – from the uh, from the pitcher standpoint, that maybe the average fan not, might not be thinking. So you could just watch the whole thing through. All this right. was an at bat from Chapman to Carroll here in the eighth. Um, great at bat, but it's funny we talked about Chapman and Chapman ended up winning this battle. So we'll watch it all the way through and then give me uh, give me your thoughts. Um, but I thought this was just a no outs. You know what I mean? Down by two. This was a very pivotal moment in the game with the series tied 1-1. Um, and for Chapman to, to come through here, you'll see. Bringing it. Mm, right there. Oh, he dropped it right on him. Right? So talk, talk me through this because, and for those uh, that are just listening, you can find us on our, on our YouTube channel where, where you can see this video. So obviously he starts him out with this first pitch here. And I, what the, the only thing I was thinking of, and correct me if I'm wrong, all of the fastballs were away. And then he finally drops that hook on him. What's the thought process there behind that? Is that just, well, you know, again, I've got 100 miles an hour, I could bring it or... I, you know, I sit there and I go, I don't think anybody should touch Chapman, but I, I got a few yeah. philosophies on that. It's right. a whole different thing. And, and get, granted, I, I don't even know what what guys can say to him because he's intimidating as hell. Mm -hmm. uh, but to sit there and, and – and, I mean, Carroll fouled off and laid off 100. Yeah. And I think so, so to be that comfortable in that batter's box, um, yeah. you know, he, he, he's not taking hellacious swings. Right, but I don't think he's looking to do an extremely amount like to try to hit a jack there. He doesn't look like sure, he's sure. In, in that kind of a mode. Um, but again, I always say late in the game, if you're going to get beat, get beat away. Chapman mm -hmm. knows that. He doesn't want to come in down in, into a lefty. In Arizona where the ball flies, it's dry yeah. air, the ball flies. The kid can hit home runs, right? So to, to make a mistake in, he doesn't want to make a mistake in. So I give okay. him credit there. He had a game plan. If this guy's going to get me, beat me, he, I'm getting beat away. And that's the yeah. way I see where Chapman's kind of leaning that way to where the catcher's setting up. They already had a game plan that, yep. hey, we're going to get beat away by this guy. And you know what? Kudos to him if he, if he slaps one down the line. He's that good of a hitter. So we'll give him to that. But if you, give, if you gave up a bomb because you threw a fat pitch on the inside corner that he's able to spin on, yeah. you know, 
And then, like I said, dropping that, he was definitely not looking hooked there. I was going to say, what's the thought process behind this this pitch right here? Because this is might be the nastiest slider I've ever seen Chapman throw. Oh, I yeah. mean, it, it, it had it had it had depth. Um, that one had depth. I mean, he threw yeah. he was throwing a hundred at your eyes, your eye levels looking up, and then mm-hmm. the spin one at eighty eight. Mm. You know, taking taking almost twenty miles an hour off of it. I don't know. You as a hitter, you can't cover both. Right, yeah. it, it it he's got overpowering stuff. Listen, I'm rooting for Chapman, dude, because he's he's got electric stuff. If those yeah. radar guns are right, there's no way that guy should feel anything. But I think it's mental for him. I think there's okay. a big mental thing in there, and it's weird. It's like when you have stinking thinking, it's mm-hmm. crazy what happens in baseball when you sit there and like I don't feel right or I don't feel good or there's a He's had some shakiness, so maybe he's a little bit wavered in his thoughts that that hesitancy, even though it's 100, there's a different when, when it, 100 has that, that late life and yeah, that 100 yeah. plays, that plays fat. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know how to explain that to people. I just know the feeling as a pitcher because I've thrown MPH lower, right, in the low 90s as opposed to throwing a pitch better than, but it's, but it's fat. Mm. It's because you don't get behind it the right way. And it has that extra spin rate or that late life sure. that, that people have. And again, um, might be because it's this late in the season, could be pressure moments make that mm-hmm. happen. It's just you gotta feel comfortable feet being uncomfortable, especially when big games on the line and it's like, you know, do you stick that sword in, right? Or you're hesitant or you already got your head chopped off. Sure. You know, <laughs> it would be killed, bro. It's there's no more to go. I felt that, yeah, watching that at bat, I was like, wow, this is really, you know, there, there's, cert, there's, there's a few at bats, I think, in every game where, you know, the tides can kind of change. And I really thought that that was one of them. So it was interesting to hear. And I know you'd mentioned that a couple times. Um, and I, I remember you texting me that uh, a couple series ago. I think it was during the Phillies series when you were talking about, I don't know, you know, these guys are, are not, you know, they're not looking for that pitch away. Because as a pitcher, like you're saying, like it seems like that mindset is I would rather be beat away than like you mentioned with LeClerc and that pitch mindset. to right. It should sure it should sure. Be mindset. And then I've heard my buddy John Buck has always said, mm. ha- hitters have a middle way approach. Yeah, right. Because if you know that, hey, you're trying to get as a pitcher, you're trying to get strike one. That's why there's guys like Altuve knows that's probably going to be the best pitch you see. You could yeah. be a great yeah. best you know first pitch hitter, but hitter. You know, um, some guys like to feel like, hey, I got to get in the groove. I want to see it again. That's a mentality, man. That's like, you know, maybe he what maybe Carol, too, is like, I can't hit into a double play here. Maybe mm-hmm. he's sitting there. I can't giving a negative thing running through his head. I don't I don't want to hit the double play here. I don't know what he said to himself before that to be like, yo, I'm going to take this pitch. I'm looking for this pitch right here and I'm driving it this way. He might have had a different something going on in his head. Will we yeah. know that? Never know. We'll never yeah. know that. It's only he does. I you mean, know? you probably at, at that point too. When you're facing a guy like Chapman, you've got—I I, assume you got to pick your spot at that point as a hitter. When you know that he's got a hundred in the tank, a hundred yep. plus, you've probably got to say, "Look, the you know I got to pick one quad, you know, one third, one section of the plate or whatever. This is where I'm looking." And to Chapman's credit too, which which you haven't seen him execute at the standard that you were used to when he was, you know, at his peak. No, that guy but... should have had 20 Ks this postseason. In my opinion, <laughs> I think a hitter likes to see when you're pretty. The more you're pretty. If you've really slowed that video down again, you can yeah. see his arm come behind him, right? If you're a hitter, yeah. your arm is here and the, the plate's this way. If you can see the ball, right, as opposed to if he could hide it a little bit here, throwing 100 yeah. – Ball is going to be in the mid before they swing. Yeah, let's right? see. Here. So you kind of like you kind of like see that slow. Hmm. Wait, 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 go back a little bit. And I, again, you don't know curveball, fastball, but right, a little bit more, a little bit more, right there. Go back. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can see it behind his his rear end, right there. You can see it and pick it up. He's a long limbed guy. If that yeah. guy could could tighten up his mechanics and that sounds so crazy right but if i had to yeah. tell chapman like hey is there any way we can figure out how to hide that ball with your long limbs and he he's long-armed if he could come at like a little bit more out of his ear like roger clemens 
Mm-hmm. Or I changed my arm approach that way. I used to be long arm like that. But that's why I feel like guys were on my shit sometimes. Sure, because they know? could see it. They see yeah. it. They see it twice, not once. You huh. know, they see it and they're like, okay, here it comes. And they're able to track they're able to track the ball longer in, in a half a second, point four seconds, whatever it is. And you got a hundred coming at you. Yeah. The good yeah. hitters can hit a hundred. If it's yeah. where they where they want it, they can see. Yeah, it. I mean, look at what Carroll does right here. Fouls it off. He's going to spoil that hundred away. He's like, I'm not doing yeah. anything with that. But you know, barreling yeah. it up is a different story. Barreling right. up a hundred, right? It, like say, oh, how did you? How did you not swing at that? How did you? How did you miss that pitch? It's very fast. The game yeah. is very fast when you're in the batter's box, when you're on the mound, when you're at shortstop, when you're in center field and mm-hmm. climbing up walls. The ball flies. It's very fast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, it, not a lot of people think that that is the case, but when you're playing the game and you don't, if, if you're not able to, you know, compartmentalize things and, and, you know, that's what they talk about. The best players are the ones that slow the game down. You have to. It is 72. It, yeah. Heart rate. You gotta check it. 72 beats, man. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Slower yeah, than man. that well, sometimes when you're in the zone. And, and I'm reading, like I said, I'm reading again, rereading. Sure. Um, uh, Relentless, another, that. Uh, Relentless, Tim Grove's yeah. book. I, I encourage you kids or you adults, it doesn't matter, business people, adults, kids, athletes. That book is so amazing because I, would, I had an unbelievable trainer, and he even had the book. Um, mm. on his desk, mm. but it, it's just, it's just a great way. It, Josh Donaldson, Josh Donaldson had bought it for the whole team. Um, nice. which I thought was cool because, you know, you have to have certain role players and when you got a cleaner or many cleaners on your team, it's amazing. That's what you got to look at the terms of what he says in there. Yeah. Um, just, just the mentality of like how Michael Jordan was and Charles Barkley yeah. and all the guys that he knows, Dwayne Wade, yeah. you know, uh, and the basketball, he knew the basketball realm. Um, but in baseball, you know, you could sit there and go, Sh- Schwarber, he's one of them, right? Yeah. The guy that wanted, Clutch. People that want to be in that situation, Altuve, for Jordan. sure. Man. Jordan right? Alvarez, this postseason, we saw that. Yes, yep. Alvarez, these guys are cleaners, man. And, and if you read that book, you'll understand what I'm saying is that you sit there and you go, who do you want up in that key situation or that pitching in that key moment or making that, that unbelievable play? Right, that's mm-hmm. why these guys get paid unbelievable amounts of money. Because you know yeah. what, when the game's on the line, I'd like to put my money on them because I know Corey they're, Seager, they're, they're, Seager, dude, that guy is just smooth. He's just ice cold to me. I, right. I just look so pro, and Simeon too. I, I heard some cool yep. stuff about how much they, how hard they work, and and no one's gonna outwork them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just talent don't, for sure. But when you mix talent. And you mix hard work, dude. That's a deadly combination, bro. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, let's finish out this episode here. We'll give our final predictions for the series because by the next time we talk, the series will be done. Um, tonight we got Nathan Avaldi on the bump, I believe, against Zach Gallen. Three um, one. Rangers are looking for their worst first. Excuse me, first World Series championship in uh, franchise history. So it should be a uh, hey, well. I'm not going to say what I think is going to happen. I'm going to say what I want to happen. I want Arizona okay. to win, so I'm rooting for Arizona okay. so that I can watch another game and another mm-hmm. game after that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my hope. I'm rooting for the Diamondbacks tonight. Yep. I have no bearing on anything else. That's all I'm going to say. So I think Diamondbacks, they're going to come out tonight, and they're going to find a way. Agreed. I'm I'm – I actually think the Diamondbacks are going to win. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a pitching duel. We've been waiting kind of all postseason for Gallon to really, you know, show why he's a Cy Young candidate. Show it tonight. Yeah. You got this is your last game at home. Let's see it, Zach. Um, go got everything Diamondbacks to gain, tonight. Nothing to lose, brother. Like I said, it's like That's back right. against the ball. Sometimes, you know, I don't know. It, it's um, it's going to be pressing because. You know the Diamondbacks; their backs are against the wall, but mm-hmm. they've been a team to push back. So I don't, I don't count All them year. out. And I don't so know how about for the series? What's your series prediction? Um, I think Texas is going to win it. Yeah, me too. I think yeah. Texas is going to going to get get out of uh, 
of their first World Series title. Me too. It just feels like this is their year. It just yep. does. It, yep. it, it, I mean, they've won uh, a record 10 games on the road this year in the playoffs. That's insane. That is insane. insane. You so, know, and I, and I, and I, ever since when we did the whole DeGrom segment too, yeah. I, I, I feel badly that he, he's there. I feel great that he's there to see, yeah. hey, you're in the right place, dude. You're in the right place. And he's very deserving of a ring, especially after all the ups and downs, volatility with your mentor. Yeah. He's like, sorry, bro. No, it's guy, no, I, you can't not be happy for DeGrom. That guy's a yeah. champion. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that it would be the first of a couple that he's got a, a chance to fulfill, you know, when he gets yeah. back. Yeah. That team will be insane with him on the back on the bump. It's true. It's almost a, it's a whole other discussion that they've done this right. without, with only six Jacob DeGrom starts this year. So well, let's get through this year. We can't fast forward. Yet. Exactly. Hey, exactly. Man, that we had a lot of fun here again today. Guys, please subscribe. Yes. Get involved with us, man. We we love to hear all this crazy stuff, thoughts, ideas, and uh, tell us if we're full of crap too. You know. <laughs> yeah. We, we yeah, that's right. Every now and again too, and sometimes we're just trying to get better. So uh, thanks for tuning in, Case. Always a pleasure. We're hanging out with you, buddy. Hey, you too. And for those people out there, like Grilly mentioned, subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your shows, and you can join the fun there. Um, and hit us up on social media, Mount Visit Pod. We'll see you next week. Mount Visit, what a great one. Baseball will be done, but yes, sir. Let's, sir, keep it going. Keep it going. (laughs)